<laughs> and we're back with another episode of Rolling While Rolling, guys. This is Eddie. And this is Ryan. And we're, and we're back, back with another, another episode, episode of Rolling Wild Wild. 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 Catch us Catch on here. Real, real quick, quick talking talk some, some real, real shit, shit and smoking that smoke yes. yes. <laughs> And today we're going to be talking about what do you bring to the table, aka what do you bring, bring to the relationship? relationship. Conversation, discussion topic it's very much popular amongst podcasters and i think just everyday people nowadays now yeah i've heard it on a couple of dates that i went on in the past couple of years so what do you bring to the table my my sister sister. literally queen queen what do you bring to this particular table that grand rising (laughs) that's literally how they started off and then it's like are they considered like hotep Mm. The ones that want you to be in a polyamorous relationship. Peace and pan Africanism. Peace and pan Africanism. Peace and pan Africanism. Peace and pan Africanism. So yeah, we are discussing today that general topic of what people bring to the table and why it matters, but also somewhat doesn't matter. Like I feel like people are using it as a question to pose, like, what can I get out of you, rather than. What can you bring to to this relationship to me that's going to help benefit me in a positive way and vice versa? I feel like a lot of times people ask just to see like like what you have to offer. That's not necessarily spiritual, mental, or physical. It's mainly like materialistic or certain acts of service, whatever the case may be. I don't know. I, I just feel like people have taken it and made it something negative, like they always do. True. Because a lot of people are unhealed. Yeah. You know? So to back what she was saying, I wrote like a little statement just so I could get my head right. It's exactly what she just said, but just worded a little different. But exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Um Hers this, was thought out. <laughs> you was just thought out too. I feel like it was like I understood it better that way than I did when I was reading it. We want to show that this conversation is necessary but is misused by the bitter or unhealed side to measure the value of a person to the masses on paper so essentially you know what this person would look like to other people versus what that person looks like to you and what makes you happy so i said when in reality we are looking for someone with the things we lack mentally physically spiritually and financially so we can become one and becoming one is the main thing it's not about what other people deem as the right thing to be with it's what you deem to be the right thing to be with so i have a cousin whose wife doesn't drive but she cooks she cleans she takes care of their children she has a job as well like she has other things that make her super valuable but the one thing to another person that would make her seem less valuable is not an issue to him like he doesn't see that as a negative because that's another opportunity for them to bond when they're driving back and forth to work and he knows her whereabouts for the most part if he's not driving her he's putting her in an uber so it's like you get what i'm saying it's it's more of like i know where my woman is and i'm comfortable with that but to another person it might be like oh you spend too much time taking her back and forth to work just because you don't like the person that you're with don't make other people feel bad because they like what their situation is like everybody's relationship is supposed to be specifically for them and i think we're losing that aspect of it in these conversations because it's so it's so small when it's a greater conversation. A lot of people don't do part ones, part twos, part threes of anything to continue to explain it. So, yeah, you just get that one little snippet (laughs) and people run with it. (laughs) For real. It's like back when people were taking in more red pill content, y'all were watching the snippets on Instagram, TikTok. Y'all were not going to YouTube and watching the long form of it so that the full explanation of what's going on is there. It's similar to how we used to use Cliff Notes to write a paper real quick but in the grand scheme of things we would have understood it more if we read the book yeah yeah we were going to also name some people that we know in the industry that kind of remind us of this conversation and just give our input on it for sure before we do that i was going to mention a co-worker of mine i've cooked before and brought baked goods and stuff like that to work and she's always complimenting me on those baked goods and we were discussing like cooking and stuff like that. And she had mentioned that she does not cook, 
her husband does all the cooking she does all the cleaning she look he has like ocd but he's he's more than fine with uh, cooking when they want to eat in and that in itself that is a compromise some people don't want to do all the cooking some people don't want to do all the cleaning she also grew up in a, in a generation where that was actually very uncommon for women to not really be cooking but it's whatever works best for you and it's always back to the statement on what do you bring to the table as in what do you offer what can you help me grow in? what areas can you help me grow in like i don't feel like it should be necessarily can you do these life skills that most people are supposed to know how to do generally speaking even though you can kind of like skate through life not knowing how to do certain things if you have the money to have that luxury so that brings us to one of our examples i'm going to mention beyonce and jay-z i'm not saying that they both don't have what it is to be like homemakers but they have more than enough money to be funding a lifestyle but they don't have to do the cooking the cleaning the picking up after the kids etc they have like three or four nannies and they all have to know at least three or four languages they all have to be able to complete a beyonce dance routine did you know that you have to be able to complete a beyonce dance routine because that shows that you are physically capable of doing the job not you about to be running after them damn kids. Mm. Ah! I mean, you got twins and blue ivy. Yes, you are running after them kids. <laughs> she's a runner. She's a drag mm. Like, what? Okay, that's cool. Yeah. But in their relationship, Beyonce has been more than vocal about her not being a homemaker. She don't cook. She doesn't clean. It's not that I'll say that she probably never did it. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. But she's been trained her her whole life to be, be a superstar. A superstar <laughs> literally on, on all scales. To be a performer, a singer, a dancer. So being a homemaker is like on the back burner. And that didn't stop her from getting mm-hmm. married. I think At all. if you get nothing from this conversation, what we're saying is every person that we mention is different for a reason because we are all different Mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. Internet conversations are for entertainment and I need y'all to understand the difference between entertainment and true help. Y'all have to learn the difference. And I know that's difficult because not everybody has quote unquote common sense. Mm -hmm. We're going to teach you to get (laughs) the common sense, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And to stop taking shit so seriously. Like, we're listing these couples so that it can be a broader example or so that you can do the research yourself and you can actually know whereas we also listed couples that we know in real life Mm -hmm. just to say two different stories and two different compromises that they all make and it's because they look past whatever every anybody else wouldn't want to do or wouldn't even think about doing like a lot of people are selfish and they gotta take their themselves out of it if you are dating from a selfish place whereas you're only thinking about what you're getting and not what the other person is receiving then you shouldn't be dating at all i agree you should strictly be being with a person that is like just transactional but also tell people that in advance yeah a lot of people want either girlfriend or boyfriend treatment without giving the energy for that like how you said, they want all these transactions on their end, but don't want to give a damn thing mm-hmm. to the other person. That's wrong. Mm-hmm. You're not a finesser. You're a liar. Literally. Literally. It's not hard to get somebody on your accord if you are honest because mm-hmm. you're giving them the choice to be there. Yeah. Another couple that is listed on there is going to be Mary J. Blige and her ex-husband. His name is Ken Do. Yeah. It's like Isaac or something like that. Can do Isaac or something like that. Yeah. Actually, I'm sexy already. See, that's why I made the video. I was like, are you even? I do. <laughs> <laughs> are those your real eyes? I'm scared. Everything about that man gave opportunist. But when you're coming to a person that has always been used mm-hmm. as an opportunist, you just seem like mm-hmm. something comfortable. Always been used. Someone that was literally going through a deep dark depression she was already going through mental health issues Mm -hmm. prior to because she kept going into relationships that served her no real purpose nothing that was healthy nothing that helped her grow things that actually set her back i feel like as far as her personal growth yes and to to lose Aaliyah to recently be around when the freaking 9-11 hits so Mm -hmm. so so all the situations were back to back and she never got time to process or heal 
but process to begin with because she just self medicated, you know, For did sure. did hard drugs, party, alcohol, whatever. Literally, and she by. suffered with insomnia. She would stay up three days at a time. So during that time, you meet somebody who who was working with another female artist who also has a similar style as you very popping very very loved by the industry yes. and he contacts you in order for you to get on that song and then initially you assume that him and that artist were once involved or were involved i don't know where she got it from but she just sensed it but he also said that he saw her as a sister initially even though he still wanted to jump her bones or whatever reference he used how you see her as a sister I this is why I got trust issues now, y'all. People have called people with a sis, they bro, they best friend, they cousin, and be hunching on them. Mm -hmm. That's or why doing I doing anything. Yeah, yes, them you, titles you. are very, very serious. Anything that gets out of the platonic area. Use it. Yeah, y'all misuse it. Mm -hmm. Say that was my ex romantic partner. Whatever it is. And a lot of y'all get so upset when you have to put a label on things, but this is why. Like, this conversation right now is the reason why, because y'all don't put titles on things, so it makes everything confusing. So people are confused as to what's a relationship and what's not and what's this and what's that. So I'm just glad this conversation was had, honestly. Mary J. Blige is a great example of a person that chooses wrong often, but can still propel in her career. Like... God damn it! If, if she wasn't still making music and and but you got to think she's yeah. manifested most of her love life. All of her songs mm. are are pain. Not gonna cry, which was a part of waiting to exhale. I then you got cry. freaking oh, no more pain, no or is that no more drama? Whatever song it is with Ludacris, y'all know we this ain't that no was purpose. like two thousand and five or two thousand and six. Yeah, but that was like what maybe. How many, I don't know how many years. Ten years apart. And the craziest thing is, when she manifested happiness, it was short lived. Every time, she, I'm except fine, for now, fine, yeah. fine, fine. bro. I, I I wanted to be happy for her. I did too. I mean, I feel like now she's more happy. For sure, being a single woman. Good morning, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She mean that. They she said, that they said what you call it? Help um, write that. Who? David. <laughs> I bet he did. <laughs> but I don't know. I bet he fucking did. Mm. But imagine if... You would never got one. Yeah, but... And imagine if either one of them had truly asked what did they bring to the table. They wouldn't have gone in the direction that they went, which would fail both of their career. If she had just broke up with AC from Joey C. Mm -hmm. As a toxic relationship. Imagine... Now, we're not saying don't ask that because mm -hmm. they still ended up divorced. But we're mm -hmm. saying, imagine if they had truly thought that out, a lot of the positives wouldn't have happened either. Mm -hmm. Like if they were just like, oh, yeah, well, she's an addict and he's a this. Mm -hmm. and we, we should not be together. Mm -hmm. Would either of them be who they are? Yeah. Potentially, yes, but potentially no. But we'll never know that now. So I think some people do need to take that leap of faith when it comes to love because none of us are perfect. And if we keep trying to be perfect we're gonna miss out oh yeah <laughs> fast forward their divorce she's paying him what alimony yes so she's paying for his lifestyle i don't know for how long Sadly. they they've been officially divorced i think since 2018 if i'm not mistaken oh, what well, why is uh brent on here <laughs> uh, uh, he, it was like he in vegas though that's, so not I have to tell real, her. that's not the real one now. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's Vegas. definitely in Vegas. Yeah, he in Vegas. Right. When are you going to invite us out again? It's been so long since we saw you. Literally. I just want Oya Scout. <laughs> and listen to unreleased music. Oh my gosh, yes. No, dead ass. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to eat a little. Yeah. You know. yeah. Go and have then, the munchies. I'm going to roll a jet and you're not going to have no dinkleberries. Okay. <laughs> Like mine is 50 on my and I'm gonna cook something. Just a little, just a little. Period. I'm gonna be over there entertaining him while I cook. <laughs> right.
I'm literally your entertainer. Damn. This earring don't want to be on. I'm going to take it off, y'all. Mm. This earring's having technical difficulties. <laughs> Brent, no, we really, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> you have gotten us through some pretty, pretty great, sad, happy, like every emotion of times. And you're a comfort space, honestly. Mm -hmm. And keep going. Please uh, invite us out again, you know? We loved our last encounter. Just just DM us. And For rolling real. while rolling. Rolling while rolling, her page, my page. Send a pigeon with a damn message on it. I don't care. Just as long as we get it. I know it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> or send your brother. Oh, yeah, Wante. She. Sorry. She, she Juan, renamed you. She Juan, renamed you. Wante. Tell me if you like it. We, we, can, we can make an arrangement. <laughs> but yeah. The next person that we want to mention is. Hmm. I think I'll do Cardi B and Offset. Okay. Cardi B and Offset because, for one, I feel like since they've been together, business-wise, they have profited tenfold. For sure. Especially if they were apart. I honestly believe that they made each other better. And they didn't let, for one, language barrier. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Cardi, I love you. Language barrier. I mean, mm -hmm. it's on Offset's um, side, too, because he's very country. Yeah. But um, language barrier... Um, Two different, well, three different ethnicities because mm -hmm. Cardi's mixed. Um, let alone them being raised in two different demographics. Mm -hmm. Him being from Georgia, her being from New York. Literally. And, and two different cultures. Mm -hmm. But that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. That happens more often than not. We have Ace Ventura's parents like that. Florida and D.C. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Mom and dad. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to mention them because in the song that Cardi wrapped with Megan the Stallion. She said she don't cook, she don't clean, but he's there, but she got a ring. Anyways, <laughs> for that WAP, that's the bottom line, was for the WAP, not for the cooking and the cleaning. I don't cook, I don't clean, but let I, me tell you, I got I, this ring. Gobble me, swallow me. But, you know, he exposed her shortly after that, um, her, of her sweeping. <laughs> and then cooking or something Literally, else. Yeah, 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 yeah. He kept yeah. exposing her, like, uh -huh. oh, yeah, y'all listen to her. Mm -hmm. but, but the whole time, she had to do some something. I mean, what do you expect? This man already had, like, three kids prior Literally, to Literally, so obviously, he knows what a woman's supposed to, mm -hmm. supposed to quote, unquote, mm -hmm. bring to the table. Allegedly, for his lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Because he got churn. Mm-hmm. And two more with her. Mm. So, that's crazy. That's true. But they did what work what works best for them, like I said. This conversation is necessary, but at the same time, there's a way of going about things. If they were to like look at themselves and be like, We're too different, this is not gonna work instead of actually trying to make it work, instead of actually loving each other and being first, because I think that's what they did first. That type of love, like um genuine bonding, all of that, you can't fake that. Mm -hmm. You cannot fake that. And I don't know if they're having marital issues right now. Um, recently, I saw that it was a little bit of whatever on Instagram, but I'm not trying to like pay too much, too much attention to it. Cause they're gonna get back together most likely. Ooh, we also could have mentioned what's it called, the Shumperts. Mmm, my girl. But back to the topic with the with Cardi being Offset. If they were to really had had did that, who's to say that they would have had culture? Mm -hmm. Or the youngest child, I forgot his name. Can you remember his name? Culture. <laughs> Culture or, or her brother. Culture number two. They do look alike. <laughs> they do look alike. That's funny. But um, yeah, that wouldn't have worked if they would have been like, well, you don't do this and I don't do that. But everybody knows that for, for one, that Cardi's a hustler. Whether y'all agree with her or not, whether y'all like her political views, whether y'all accept her past for what it was of her being strictly in survival. We do indulge in specific practices on this show, but we are of legal age. We are in a state where this is legal, and we do not promote underage or irresponsible they wouldn't be where they are today for one because they are property owners together they do a, a couple of their business ventures together yeah. like it's a joint thing and then they also have their separate obviously yeah. but I, I just feel like business wise they wouldn't be partners in that way if they didn't for one see what each other brought to the table and actually took a chance on one another outside of just oh I'm going to like make you feel away because you don't have this that and the third going on oh i forgot cardi doesn't really drive 
So that's another thing. Not to say she got to, because obviously she can afford a driver. But who's to say that they may not come on hard times, God forbid, and she has to drive herself. Yeah. Right. Also, another thing I thought of was that both of their careers musically needed each other at yeah. the time period sure. where they met because Cardi B was blowing up, but she needed an already established group to kind of bring her even further to the masses because a lot of people were not taking her as seriously as they should mm -hmm. have. Vice versa, they needed more female collabs because a lot of times the only people they do collab with is men. Mm -hmm. And and he helped her sound because she she, yes. she honed in on her ad-libs and she made sure her ad-libs were the, the best the part of, song. of yeah. the song. For real, for real. And that's what helped her the most because like I said, she does have a language barrier because her accent is so thick mm -hmm. that uh, that was one of the reasons why people were not perceiving her music yes. very well. I think kind of sucks. I kind of wish she would have leaned into the, the Spanish the, rap, the Spanish mm -hmm. rapping, and doing English. She did a she did a couple songs on mm -hmm. the back end like that later on, but in the beginning, if she had honed in on it, yeah, she would have reached a whole different demographic as well. Now it seems like she's just happy being a mom. You know? Yeah, yeah. And like you said, she put all her eggs in different baskets, mm -hmm. so she is able to now I be a mom. Because she has sources of income coming in that can allow her to live a soft life. When she pointed that out to me, because she, she always be coming up with some great points. I was like, damn, you're so right. She did all that hustling when she was first pregnant so that she didn't have to ever hustle like that again. People didn't understand why she was twerking and job rating while the baby was in there. Because she was like, I don't want to have to do this my next pregnancy. And she did not. She sat down. As she deserves to. Right now. Everything happens for a reason. I'm glad that they look past whatever differences they may have had to make it work long enough for them to grow as people. Because even if they don't work out as a couple and they end up having to co-parent, um, I feel like they're still going to be great parents to their children. And I feel for like sure. they're still friends at the end of the day. And that's one of the reasons why she can forgive him for what he has done and he can forgive her for what she has done. From what I can see from the outside. And of the can I say this? Yes, he was a cheater, but he matured Cardi B the fuck up. She put her big girl panties on very easily because can we say this? Sometimes as women, we think because we making all this money that we can just not do what we're supposed to do. We think because we freaky that that's enough. No, sometimes you got to show that other side of you, that softer side of you for them to lock in i'm sorry like because you you gotta think i like how she said this is not this man's first child this is not this man's first relationship this is not this man's first anything he's had to grow up pretty fast mm -hmm. so this is your first time with a man with kids excuse me excuse me that wants to marry you or has married you not saying the other man didn't want to marry you but took you that seriously after being an ex stripper and all these other things because mm -hmm. you know that type of shit does matter to people not to him though like he overlooked all of that shit and was like he was a let's re let's reiterate he was a industry man yes that overlooked it because yes she did have past engagement past relationships and people took it seriously but they were in that lifestyle generally speaking when someone like her comes into the industry having a past that people do know about a lot of times men try to keep them on the back burner and Yep. Just have them as a side piece yes. or somebody that is literally just a trophy. I ain't gonna lie. I want to mention Stevie J and Jocelyn Hernandez. Yep. He married never her first, to... but did not respect her at all. They got married? Allegedly. On the show. That was never proven. No. I, I don't feel like that's true, but I don't want the Puerto Rican princess to... To fucking try to slice me up with her cocaine. Oh, and I oh, she won't come slice my pork in the pants. Head ass up. In general, they do not wife publicly wife literally sure. wife a woman that has a past like that. They really don't. I mean, they may have back in the day, but that's because they didn't have you know people doing real research on you like they do now. Like now, your, your privacy oh. is 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 very much gone unless you're like an older actor like Don Cheadle. He's True. very private about his life, but that's because he's been acting since, what, the 90s? Maybe late 80s? Mm -hmm. He's been acting for a minute, He so. looks damn good for his age. That's why Kevin Hart said, damn. Yeah, he's a damn, like, I would have like, never thought. As hell. I would have never thought. Yeah, he, 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 that, that man has always been fine. 
And he acted in some amazing fucking roles. What are we talking about? I ain't even gonna say too much right now. But he's a Sag. And that's, that. Oh, I should have known. I was attracted to him. I was attracted to fucking DMX. I was attracted to mm -hmm. um, Chadwick Boseman. Oh. Um, I was low-key attracted to Samuel in a weird way. I was too. It was I more felt like I knew so, he would be a good husband. Yes. And I knew that he was like, you know, somebody's favorite uncle. Like, that's what he gave. And his smile. A lot of people would steer away from Samuel Jackson because he has very, very Afrocentric features. Mm -hmm. Can we say that? Unfortunately. And we are so Dang. against Afrocentric look. And we have grown to hate it multiple times in history. Mm -hmm. Multiple times in society. Mm -hmm. In the in the nineteen twenties and thirties, when we were really relaxing our hair, everybody was relaxing their hair just so that it could look appealing and they could look professional and, and what presentable does that even mean? to you know this society at that time standards. Then we transitioned multiple times. Mm -hmm. I specifically want to talk about the seventies when mm -hmm. motherfuckers knew the exact amount of Native American that they had in their blood to mm -hmm. the point where. They are actually naturalized citizens here, so therefore this is their land. I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna <sighs> say I ain't gonna say too much, brothers and sisters of Roland while rolling. But I'm not gonna say too little either. Uh, so I'm like my brother. So like him so long. Mm, mm, mm. Anyways, back to the topic. But yeah, what do you bring to the table? Nathaniel. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Say. I can't really list too much. Cause y'all gonna try to stalk her. I could crack a joke. <laughs> yeah. And I got titties. Boom. Um. That's about it. I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's just about it. Mm. Do I? Man, I got fucking corn in my teeth. <laughs> That's the only thing I would take away from corn is that that and the fact that it comes out the same as it when. Okay. Oh Lord, yes! <laughs> no matter how many times you chew on it, <laughs> how, bro? I know I feel it. <laughs> it always be one piece. I feel it burst like, in my mouth. Pause. Mm, I love when it bursts. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's in my mouth. I love it <laughs> every time. <laughs> Mm. Y'all want her to do ASMR? Slop on my mouth. Like, oh, on, on the, the call. call. Check it in with me. me. And do your job. Hey, wait. On. Okay. That was enough. That was, that was all you was getting out of me. I was going to lose the rhythm. Uh -huh. I keep telling you that. I, I have no either. rhythm. I don't know how I got pregnant. Anyways. <laughs> The fuck we talked a lot about them. We could go to the last yeah. one. Yeah. Which is Angela Bassett and her husband. Courtney B. Vance. And they are both like established in the industry. Acting, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it could have been a situation where either of them had dimmed each other's light. Light, yes. But they chose not to. Yep. And now we have a beautiful love story that is them being together to this day with children and all. Like and it does help that they were in a relationship, but they didn't get married until they were older. I do respect that because I feel like they really made sure, yeah, mm -hmm. we are meant to be together. Because I can imagine all those long periods where either of them is acting where they can't pour into the relationship as much as they could or should have. That could have tore them up and it didn't. It created the relationship that they have now. Mm. I definitely agree. He never tried to dim her light. Because a lot of people don't even know who Angela Bassett, Angela Bassett's husband is, yes. which is, it sucks, but in general, I feel like she's like a star. He is a star as well. Yes. But her path, the way it took her, she was meant to be that woman for real. Yeah. And he is still that man because he has great acting chops. Yeah. But like we said, Angela fine as hell, bruh. And I feel like as much as she's great as an actress, a director, just a being, the epitome of what? The embodiment of what? What did she say? What did Regina say? But what she embodies at her core is beyond anything that is skin deep. She is artistic excellence embodied in human form. As much as she is that, she's also fine as hell. And we like, we try to respect it 
Because that's auntie, but auntie fine as fuck. Okay. I mean, auntie, you are very beautiful. Very, very, very um audacious. Sorry. I feel like that key and peel. Um the key and peel skit. Ooh, wee. Miss Clarissa, I'm gonna tell you, girl, in that dress, you looking about as sweet as a field full of honeysuckle after a spring rain shower. <laughs> How do you do it, girl? Mm. That ass, though. I really wish, like, you know, you. Never mind. I, I, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not even going to go there. I ain't even gonna hold you. I wish that kiss was longer. Y'all was worried about the wrong shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a. <laughs> and no matter how innocent it was, we we all watched it a couple times. I was like, two beautiful black women embracing each other with nothing but love. That's what that gave to thank me. Thank you. And you all take kissing. Well, I took it there too. <laughs> but I also saw the beauty yeah, in it too yeah. first before anything else. Yeah. yeah. That should be last, if anything. But I get why it's there because yeah. they're very attractive. But anywho, who was that the example? Oh, shit. So Samuel Jackson and his wife, Tanya Richardson Jackson, she got both names, by the way. Period. And he still respected that. And they've been married since a long, long time ago. They got married in 1980. Oh, Lord. Neither of us was born. That was six years before my parents got married. Yeah. They love each other for real. Sometimes. 44 years. Yeah, that's older. That's minutes. older than my eldest cousin. My eldest cousin's like forty. My eldest first cousin's forty on my mom's side. Yep. But yeah, they've been married for forty-four years now. And if anybody who knows them knows that, for one, one of the most I'll say cr critically acclaimed movies for Holly Berry was *Losing Isaiah*. And in that movie, Samuel Jackson and his wife Latanya. They appeared as lawyers for one for Holly and one for the mother that found Isaiah, basically, and adopted. They're against each other, like literally, like prosecutors, you know, against each other. Neat, cute. I like that. She also has played in Fighting Temptation with Cuba Gunn Jr. and the OJs and Montel Jordan. He was in there and other actors, but she was also in there and she was the one that was basically going against Cuba, getting what his, I guess that's his grandmother, the older woman that passed away, getting her church and everything that she left when she passed. And millions of Samuel J L. Jackson movies and appearances. Also, Latanya was in God Darn Grey's Anatomy. Everybody's been through Grey's Anatomy, but she was Meredith's sister's mother, the, one, the woman that adopted her. Her name is Maggie, Maggie's mother, yes. Yes. Oh my God. Because she she made me cry in a freaking Shonda Rhimes. I can't. Shonda Rhimes and and the other creators that wrote that show. I can't. But anyways, they're both great actors. But if they were to have looked back and been like, um, you don't do drugs, right? Samuel Jackson. I don't know if he was doing drugs then when you met Latanya, but in general, if y'all were to had looked at what y'all had done prior to the to the relationship. Who's to say that y'all would? Which I think y'all did. I think y'all actually probably had that conversation. I think y'all actually pursued each other. Like the way they described, like why they couldn't like re resist each other. Mm -hmm. To sum it up, Samuel Jackson had done a lot of notable things in his lifetime, as as we have mentioned before in previous video. When it comes to the code switching, in general, he has succumbed and overcame a lot of stuff, and created this name for himself that nobody can take away from him. Yes, he hasn't gotten the awards that we all think that he deserves, but a lot of black actors, singers, songwriters don't get it. So Sometimes they die never getting it. You know what I mean? Like, not to say we should be grateful every time someone gets one, but at the same time, it's like, you know. But this is why we gotta stop putting our validation in a white system, mm -hmm. honestly, because mm -hmm. they're never going to validate us. They know we're great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how do we keep y'all feeling low is by never telling y'all y'all are great. Literally. I've been here for 44 years. She had stuck beside him when he was in his darkest of days and battling addiction. And I'm pretty sure it was, it was linked to, you know, depression or whatever else was going on in his life. 
it had to be something that he was feeling i feel like outside of you know feeding for that drug i feel like he initially took that drug in order to cope you know what i mean just use it as a coping mechanism for whatever he may have been going through and she stuck beside him bruh how do you ask that question so if i were to so happen to be addicted to drugs for 20 years would you say like what the fuck no who asked that nobody or like how do you explain after being such a great guy? Because a lot of addicts can hide it very well that I'm going to OD in front of our child. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, that's real love. And I'm, I'm telling y'all, like, I don't think I'm strong enough for that. Our ancestors were stronger. Yeah. Because imagine, like, even though you stopped and you got better, that's a memory she'll never forget. Yeah. That's true. And now she's seen something that we could have prevented her from seeing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's real love, honestly, to be able to forgive. But yeah, imagine if they would ask, what do you bring to the table? Can you handle whatever this is? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she had to handle him getting booked back to back shortly and after. Being alone with their child. Sometimes putting her acting career on the back burner. Yeah. But... These are the things we sign up for when we are trying to get to greatness. Yeah. Like, if we are really talking about building and being oh. together. Compromise. I don't think many people know how to do that anymore because We're taught to of be whatever. selfish. Yeah, for sure. More than that. That's why when people are selfless, people try to use, use the, them. For sure, bro. The constant compromise that they had to do within that relationship and to still be together and not speak bad of each other. Yes. Think about that. Not be shady. Will and Jada. Not be together and live separate lives. Like, they're still very much in tune with each other. Very much in tune with each other. I never thought I'd see today. That what? That older people be having uh, no clue. Oh. <laughs> nah, I kind of saw it. Yeah, you right. <laughs> I have a song for you. And the music of the episode is... Yeah. So my song is going to be Lucky Days, Love You Too Much. And I resonate with that song a lot. Lucky Days pen his videography, his creative mind, his ability to have duality with femininity and masculinity, his dress style. She's met him multiple times. This is one of her, like, booze and shit. Like, Chill out, bruh. He is, like, a celebrity crush, like, okay, for real. Definitely, definitely a crush. That hug was a little bit too much for me, Lucky. But I loved every moment of it. Ah, ha, ha. Anywho, great song. I think you all should check it out. The title speaks for itself. Love you too much. Have you ever loved anyone too much? Like, to the point where you're giving more than you're supposed to. I love you too much. And what is your song or songs trey amani and lost kids on s featuring brent Fias. it's the hook man that loop brent Very. and the artwork yeah for sure for sure and just how his voice matches the instrumental in a way that a lot of people can't really do like yeah. that's one of the reasons why he's so good at making hooks when it when it comes to a rap song or whatever the case may be just making a song orchestrating it i don't know the way his his mind works is is amazing man. yes Love you, Brent. Um, obviously, it's Lost Kids, so I know that you had involvement as well, because that's also, I think, yours and others. Y'all have created that, and everything that you are on, you have to, like, you know, make it your own a little bit. You have to tweak it a little bit. So you've said, you know? So, but yeah, I love the song. It gives, like, I'm driving an old Audi, and I got these earrings in, and this hair, probably, or, or something of this magnitude, something big. And I'm about to go pick up my kids for real, for real, or one of my children, because I'm probably gonna just go have one at this time, because probably like, what, the late 80s, for real, for real. I'm over here living my best life, soft life. My husband is doing whatever, you know, making that money for real, for real. And all I gotta do is be cute and be a mom, sometimes. But that's what it gives. It gives black excellence during the, <laughs> during the late 80s. <laughs> So-called black excellence. I don't know. I like it. She like it a lot. I probably perceive that like totally wrong, but I need you to like, you know, break it down for me in a private um, session. You don't want them cause you only fall in love with all of us. You want them to change, 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 change,
All right, now we gotta go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks for watching another episode of Rolling While Rolling. And we'll see you next time.